Friends, as followers of Jesus, we in solemn mind join together this holy day of our Christian community, Good Friday. Good Friday? What's good about an innocent man, cruelly tortured and brutally murdered? Ah, but it is good for us who benefit from the unfathomable sacrifice on the cross, an act of pure love of the sinless one for the totally broken and sinful world. Let us come before God in prayer. Lord, thank you for loving us more than life itself. Jesus, our Saviour, life is hard and uncertain. So much pain and hurt and heartache seem to surround us. And yet, knowing this, you still willingly gave up your life and became God with us and God who rescues us. We remember today the pain and suffering of the cross and all that you were willing to endure so that we could be set free. You paid the price, such a great sacrifice, to offer us the gift of eternal life. Help us never to take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf. Help us to be reminded of the cost of it all. Forgive us for being too busy or distracted by other things, for not being fully recognising what you freely gave, what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you that because of your huge sacrifice, we can live free. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered and your power is everlasting. Thank you that we can say with great hope, it is finished, for we know what's still to come and death has lost its sting. We praise you for you are making all things new. Because of your sacrifice, we can spend eternity with you. There is no pain you cannot conquer, no hurt you cannot heal, and no life you cannot transform. Your death and resurrection proved that nothing is impossible for you and that we are more than conquerors because of you. Today and every day, help us to fix our hearts and our minds on you and as we do, please give us more of your joy, hope and peace. We love you. We worship you with all our hearts. Amen. Today, friends, we are going to meditate on the last recorded words of Jesus as he hung on the cross. There are seven of these sayings. Let us begin with the first. When they came to Golgotha, they crucified Jesus along with two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The scene around the foot of the cross was cold and unfeeling. The soldiers are part of a, an execution detail that are bored, bored with crucifixions. Perhaps they had conducted many that week. The first time they saw one, they were probably appalled by the brutality but now they are calloused and emotionless. They pass the time as they gamble, casting lots to see who will be awarded the victim's possessions. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What is Jesus saying in his last hour? Jesus is praying a request to God. It is remarkable that Jesus was not asking for himself. I'm sure if we would be in that situation, we would be terrified and overcome by pain and trauma. I'm sure we would be in a situation where we'd be saying probably, God help me, if we could even utter a word. But Jesus prayed is one of the, but Jesus' prayer is one of complete unselfishness. He is concerned for the people that are responsible for crucifying him and is asking God to forgive them. Rather than thinking of himself, he is thinking of those souls that are in more peril than he. 
The first thing I learned from this is the word love. Jesus, with, with the time running out, showed love. But his love is not only for those soldiers who put him on the cross. He speaks in love to the only one who can deliver him. That's God himself. Not for himself, but for others, as he speaks in love. Look at the word Father and the alternatives. Lord is a term of respect for one who is exalted in rank. Almighty God would be a bit formal at the hour of one's crucifixion, but it would express God's power. Father, on the other hand, is the first term of relationship. It is a family term. It was often expressed as Abba, roughly meaning father and or daddy and dad. Also a cry of the Holy Spirit helping us to reach out to God. He was praying for the soldiers who put him on the cross that were under orders, even if they disagreed. Only after the fact did they realise with awe, surely he was the son of God. Pontius Pilate may have been a better candidate, even though he deemed Jesus innocent. The pressure from the Jewish leaders forced him against his judgment to sign the death warrant. But afterwards he washed his hands publicly. But when you think about it, we are the ones that Jesus went to the cross for. You and I together made the cross necessary. We are the ones Jesus prayed for. Praise be to God. Good morning. I just want to read from Luke chapter 23 verses 32 and verses 39 to 43. Two other men, both criminals, were let out with Jesus to be executed. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence. We were punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. This man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Now one of the criminals accepted that Jesus was the Son of God and also a king, that he did not deserve this punishment. He realised that Jesus had done nothing wrong. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus always tells the truth. Well over 50 times in the four Gospels it states, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Truth. Truth is an actual fact. It's an indisputable fact. Truth is always accurate and can be relied on. Truth in John's Gospel 17 verse 70 says, Your word is truth, meaning the Bible is the truth. Even on the cross, Jesus in great agony, yet he cares for the criminal and is willing to share the truth, the truth of the gospel with him. How willing are we to share the gospel with others? Jesus cares for us always and we need to be like Jesus, caring for others. The best care we can give is sharing the truth from the Bible with others especially during this time of the pandemic of COVID-19. God is wanting people to be like the criminal and recognise Jesus as the Son of God who died for them. Jesus wants all of us to come to Jesus. For the criminal, today was then and there. Our today has not yet come. It will come when Jesus calls us home and then you are here. You will be in paradise with me. Can you think of anything better than being where Jesus is? To be with Jesus, seeing him face to face, how wonderful. Jesus calls it paradise and another meaning could be heaven. In the book of Kings, Solomon is praying to God and heaven is described as your holy dwelling place. So it is God's holy dwelling place. Heaven, 
a place of extreme beauty and delight where God and man are restored to perfect fellowship. Heaven, a place of supreme happiness for we are home with our Lord Jesus Christ. This Easter, I pray if you don't know for sure that your final abode is heaven, look to Jesus. He is on the cross for you. Call to him as did the criminal and receive forgiveness and know with real assurance that your home is in heaven with Jesus. You are restored to perfect fellowship with God. Amen. John 19 verses 26 When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. This, the message in which I've constructed today, I've titled it, The Extent of the Love of Christ. As I reflect on the third word of Christ on the cross, I see something about his perpetual love. Here he is dying in agony, gasping for each breath, yet he sees his mother, now broken at the foot of the cross, weeping and inconsolable. His heart goes out to her. Rather than being consumed by his own welfare, he is touched by hers. She is a widow and soon to be known as the mother of a crucified criminal. And he can see that life will not be easy for her. And yet Jesus provides for her in his deepest weakness and humiliation. And as Christians, I feel like this passage is a huge encouragement for us overall because what more can Jesus do for us in our present day situations? Currently, we are in a better position than both Jesus and Mary were at that point when that he was on the cross. And Jesus chose to still provide for her in his deepest moment of weakness and humiliation. And so what more can he do for us? his beloved disciples, in which he endured the agony of the cross for. And when I put this into perspective, perspective, it must have been hard for Jesus to watch his mother suffer so much. Yet Jesus could have gone down from the cross to be with his mother, to give her temporary peace and temporary comfort for that momentary time. However, it was not momentary love in which Jesus had for Mary. It was eternal love that Jesus had for Mary, which is what he showed by staying on that cross to show Mary the love he had for her. And the question is, you ask, what do I mean by this eternal love? Because Jesus knew in order to show Mary the true extent of his love, he could only do that through saving her. Because Jesus' love for us as his disciples runs deeper than just him coming down and comforting us when we are down in sad times. Because Mary may have been sad in that point in her life, but Jesus knew that the only way he could show her his love was to endure the pain on the cross and to save her from the sin of the world so then she would be with him in heaven. And I think that is, that is the part of this verse which takes me so much to see the extent of the love of Christ which ran deeper than, than, than what was being said. And so that is my message for you today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Jesus cried out in agony from the cross, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. Have you ever said that? Thought it when praying against wars, illness, a virulent virus? Have you felt highly stressed, perhaps during panic and fear, or even during intense loneliness? My God, where are you? Simply, God gave man free will to make his own choices. Mm -hmm. 
Remember the footprints in the sand, where for a space only one set of footprints were apparent. Oh dear, I feel bereft when thinking of it. But wait, no. Then there were two sets of footprints again. Jesus had in fact been carrying me, talking to me until once more we walked side by side. Remember, dear friends, to surrender is not a sign of defeat. Surrender is letting go of resistance and fear. To quote Pastor Johnson, think about it. Yes, Jesus obviously felt the victim briefly, but then he continued to commune with his father, acknowledging God's power and grace, and became victorious. Jesus called out to his Father in heaven. So, brothers and sisters, can we? I am thirsty. John 19, 28. Jesus' statement here shows us that he experienced real and physical humanity. And the suffering of Jesus was real. Jesus was truly thirsty. He had been on the cross six hours. He was exhausted. He had endured a sleepless night where, in agony, he had sweat drops of blood. He had been betrayed, disowned, handed over to be scourged. He would carried his cross, a crown of thorns placed on his head, iron spikes pounded through his hands and feet. The loss of blood had made him dehydrated. The scripture from Psalm 69, 21 is to be fulfilled and Jesus is leaving no doubt by his words, I am thirsty, that he is the Messiah and that all has been accomplished. Here, Jesus, the one who said to the Samaritan woman in John 4, 14, whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst. And in John 7, 37, Jesus cried out, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Jesus, the one who has the capacity to satisfy every hunger and quench every thirst, hangs on the cross near death. The source of life, of grace, of hope, of love, the living water. The spring is nearly extinguished and he is thirsty. Jesus, our only true source of living water, the only one who can satisfy the deepest longing of our soul. How heartbreaking. What are you thirsty for in life? Sometimes we get distracted and extinguished uh, and exhausted by life and we don't even realise how thirsty and parched our soul has become. Can I encourage you today to look to Jesus, the one who satisfies our soul forever with his life-giving water. And with the words from Horatius Boner, this is an invitation to come to Jesus and drink. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. It is finished. When World War I ended, what great celebrations took place. It was the war to end all wars, they said. It is finished, they said. No more wars, for humanity has learnt its lesson. War is futile and demands such a dreadful cost in lives and sorrow. Was the war really finished? Has the war to end all wars done that? Instead, humans have learnt more and more dreadful ways to kill more and more people, devastate their cities and lands, 
leaving millions homeless and hopeless. That finish was certainly not finished. From the beginning, men and women chose to go their own way. We do not need God to tell us what to do. We are smart. We are invincible. So we turned a wondrous creation into a place of chaos and rebellion. God in his mercy sent prophets and leaders to remind us of who God was and what he wanted of us. Some people listened to the voice, but there was no one who fully obeyed God and sought after him. But God, in his total knowledge, knew all that would happen before the world began. Even then, he had a plan to bring the whole world that went astray back to himself. This plan rolled out through Abraham and the people of Israel. From the lineage of this chosen people, at the fullness of time, was born the only one who could bring this plan to fruition, Jesus of Nazareth. All the corruption, violence and injustice that had marred the original beautiful creation was now aimed at that dying figure on the cross. Like a super magnet, he drew all the sin and ugliness of the world to himself. And there, because he was God's own pure and obedient son, he became the sacrifice that broke the power of sin and death. When Jesus hung on the cross, he knew he had done everything according to the plan that was made before the world began to bring everything in heaven and earth to be reunited with God. The reign of sin and death was broken, finished. So when Jesus from the cross said with great certainty, it is finished, his finished was a finish that keeps on being finished. It is finished. In the death of Jesus, our relationship with our God and creator was restored. Let the new era begin. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Good Easter Friday and I thank God that I get to share this little message of hope with you. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Hope for us and a true understanding that Jesus had of what comes next. This is an old age prayer the Jewish people taught their kids to say before bedtime and one that has been echoed across time and lands every night and it comes from Psalms 31 verse 5. So Jesus would have been taught this from a very young age and may have said this before sleeping thousands of times. Jesus' death was nothing but brutal, but we remember that everything Jesus did, he was in full control. He was God who chose to be man. He gave up his spirit as a result of hearing what his father tells him. This is seen in John 10, 17 and 18. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. So let's do a little express study on this verse. Jesus called out with a loud voice. He spoke loudly with one of authority. Everyone there saw and heard what happened. He had power to lay down his life. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. These are the words of intimacy, trust and surrender. Intimacy. He knew God was there with him. Do you know God is there with you? God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Trust. The word commit comes from the Greek word paratithemi, which means to entrust someone for safekeeping. Brothers and sisters, trust God with your everything. He wants you to be able to rest in his ability. This is a promise that he has for you. Surrender. 
He gives back to God what is God's. The word spirit, onyema, in Greek means breeze and is referred both to the Holy Spirit and our spirit. In this context, Jesus gives up his spirit and soul as they are described by 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And the word in Luke says he breathed his last. He, realized, he released his breath and spirit. This is interesting as this is not just something Jesus did. In the book of Acts, we see Stephen call out to God, Lord Yeshua, receive my spirit. I challenge you today and every day, commit your spirit to God. Get to know him personally and more and more every day. He wants to live and walk with you. Grow in intimacy and trust by surrendering to Jesus who bought you at a price. I'd like to just say a quick prayer. Lord, we hear your words, don't fear, just believe. Lord, if there is any of my brothers and sisters that are living in fear over what is happening in the world at the moment, please comfort them with your Holy Spirit and give them strength to commit their spirit into your hands as you have prayed so many times as a man and were among your last words. Lord, I pray and petition with thanksgiving this request. We receive your peace that is beyond understanding. Lord, we will not let the enemy steal this peace that you gave us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I love you heaps and may God's peace rest in your home as we remember what Jesus paid for us that day. It's a time of prayer now and I'm going to start with our thoughts from a message from our Presbytery Chairman, Reverend Gary Hardingham and it was in our Carpentaria link. This is not the new normal. This is the present abnormal. It's Friday, above and fearful. We whisper in dark corners and behind closed doors. But don't despair. Keep reaching out to each other. Be strong. Sunday is coming. Let us bow in prayer. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we have been so much to be thankful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who so willingly went to the cross so that we may know forgiveness and could look forward to spending eternity in heaven. Thank you for our families. Each one is so precious to you. May all be safe in this time of great difficulty. At the moment, it feels like the whole world is in darkness, spiritual darkness, where people are afraid anxious, confused, discouraged and worried. O oh God, we know you are with us and Jesus walks beside us. For you have said you will never forsake us. We pray for your light to shine through. May each of us be a shining light for you to all in your world. Today is Friday and we feel the pain for all those who are sick and isolated with the coronavirus. We also feel the sadness for so many who have lost loved ones from the COVID-19. Please comfort them, Lord. May they know your strength and in the pain and your loving arms in support. It says in your word, it came to pass. And we know this too will pass. There will be an end, for Sunday is coming. Strengthen us, O Lord. Encourage us and calm us as we are called to do things differently. Help us to courageously, courageously embrace the learning we receive. May we thirst for that close relationship with you, Lord Jesus. May grace, mercy and peace be with you all in the name of God our Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>